An estimated 6 million people are killed annually, either directly or indirectly, by a problem that's growing more critical by the year, antimicrobial resistance, or AMR. Many pathogens can no longer be controlled by the most effective medicines we have for fighting them. This uh, developing new medicines has become critical, but even more difficult than before. Antimicrobial resistance affects us all because anyone could at some point be infected by potentially deadly common microbes that no longer respond to the medicines we use to treat them. Globally, AMR pathogens already kill more people than either HIV AIDS or malaria. It's a trend that has experts very worried. It's getting worse. Yeah? Antibiotic resistance is rising. If we don't do anything now, we will have a, a post-antibacterial era by 2050. The most direct threat to human health is posed by antibiotic-resistant bacteria, often called superbugs. The WHO has identified priority pathogens, among them drug-resistant Clostridium difficile, which can cause life-threatening diarrhea, as well as a drug-resistant strain of the bacteria that causes gonorrhea. Half a dozen others are even more deadly. If you combine all of those six pathogens, they're responsible for, for close to 75% of all deaths attributable to drug-resistant infections in 2019. Bloodstream infections, uh, pneumo uh, pneumonia, um, uh, meningitis, these are the, the, the leading diseases that are causing problems. But antibiotic-resistant bacteria are just one aspect of the issue. Viruses, among them HIV, can also grow unresponsive to the drugs used to treat them, as can parasites like the plasmodium that causes malaria. And doctors are also now seeing many more fungal infections that were once easily treatable, acquiring resistance to conventional medications. Resistance can develop very fast. If a new antibiotic was introduced for use right, right now, today, so on average we would see reports of resistance in about two to three years. But in the lab, you know, if you do this in the lab, you'll see this in 11 days or something like that for certain antibiotics. But I think we have to remember it's a natural evolutionary process and this is accelerated by the misuse and overuse of antimicrobials. Uh, we can't stop it, but we can slow it down. In the evolutionary arms race with enemies that are too tiny to see with the naked eye, the situation is growing critical. We have to develop new antibiotics and other treatments and use the ones we already have more wisely. For more on this, I'm joined now by DW Science correspondent Derek Williams. Derek, we just heard how pathogens always develop antimicrobial resistance eventually. What factors influence that and help these uh, pathogens to spread? There are a number of different factors that really play into it. It's, it's quite a complicated topic. Um, as, as our expert mentioned, there's the, the misuse and the overuse of antibiotics, for instance. Um, if, if you get COVID, it's not going to help you to take an antibiotic. COVID is a virus and antibiotics help against bacteria. What it will do, however, is drive the evolution of resistance in the bacteria in your body. So the misuse and the overuse of a particular antibiotic for a disease that it's not going to actually help treat is driving this natural evolution. Um, there's also other factors that are involved. For example, the widespread prophylactic use of antibiotics in, in intensive livestock farming. That plays a role. It's, they're being used preventively in animals in order to keep them in these farming factories from developing diseases in the first place, rather than treating a disease after it's been developed. So they're there are a lot of moving parts, and it's quite a complicated topic, but, um, but those are some of the basics. Why aren't we steadily developing uh, new treatments uh, to avoid this problem, Derek? What's holding pharma companies back? Well, the whole drug development system when it comes to antibiotics is, is kind of a little bit broken. I mean, it, it's very expensive and takes a very, very long time to develop new drugs, to get them from the 
preclinical stage all the way through through approval. And um, it takes 10 to 15 years, it can cost you up to like a billion dollars. So it's an expensive proposition and pharma companies are businesses, so they're profit driven. And the, the problem is, is there's just not that much profit in antibiotics. Um, it's kind of a one and done thing and we, and we still have antibiotics that we can use and that sort of work, but they're just, as the, as the pathogens develop more, as the bacteria develop more resistance to them, they're working less and less well. And added to that, there's the problem that it's actually a, a hidden problem since most of what's going on is, is happening in the developing world. Hmm. What might life look like, Derek, if we don't manage to develop uh, new medicines that can get these pathogens under control? Well, it's kind of scary. I'll pull out some statistics. Right now, there are, as, as, as we heard, about 1.3 billion deaths directly attributable to AMR pathogens um, every year. That's, that works out to about 3,500 people uh, every day every, are dying from it. And um, if we don't get on top of the, of the issue, by the year 2050, it could actually turn into, some estimates say, 10 million people a year. So it would turn into a cause of mortality that tops cancer and, and heart disease. The thing mm. that's most frustrating, I think, for the experts in this particular er, uh, area is that we can't, we, could, we know what the solution to the problem is, we're just not pursuing it. Okay, Derek, thank you so much. Our science correspondent, Derek Williams.